Hello, uh, my name is Mr Cooper. I'm a director at Outward Green to Cadbury's Trust. Uh, I'm going to go through P2 electricity with you and lesson one is the basics of symbols and circuits. So if you remove all distractions, uh, you will need a pen and paper to help you with this lesson. Okay, for a starter activity, what I'd want you to do is to draw and label a series circuit containing a cell and two bulbs. Can you also add a switch to control both bulbs? And I'm going to give you 60 seconds in order to complete that task. Okay, and stop there then, let's see how we've got on. Okay, so here we've got a key stage two diagram where we've actually got two bulbs uh, and a cell all in series. As you can see, the line goes all the way through each component. At key stage three and key stage four, you'd be expected to draw something like this where we've actually got the circuit symbols for each of these components and then this diagram we've got a switch. So today's lesson we're going to look at um, explaining the differences between series circuits and parallel circuits and we're also going to identify some symbols for different components. For this task can you match the letters with the correct name of the component? Okay so here we've got eight names and eight symbols. All you've got to do is match the symbol up with the name. As you can see, bulb has already been matched up with A. So you've got 60 seconds in order to complete the other seven symbols. Okay, time up. Let's have a look at some of the answers. Excellent then, let's have a look at some of the answers. We've got switch, which is open, which is D. Switch, which is closed, which is F. Battery, C. Wire, G. Bulb, which was A, which was already given to you. Resistor, B. Ammeter, H. And voltmeter, E. And these are all symbols and names that I'll be using throughout this course. Okay, let's have a look at two different types of circuit. For this uh, activity, we're just going to use Active Listen. So I'm going to share with you a, a chunk of information uh, and then I'll ask you to record it in your books. There is a task at the end of this uh, in order for you to complete, which uses those two pieces of information um, I'm going to give you. So the first circuit is a series circuit. Here we can see all the components are connected end to end, one after each other. You can trace the line going all the way from the cell all the way through one bulb and then through the next bulb and then back into the cell. They make a simple loop for the current to flow around. Now I'll go into current in a little bit more depth later on. 
In this particular circuit, in a series circuit, if one bulb blows, as in it breaks, then that means the whole circuit is, is incomplete and therefore all the bulbs will not work. And that's because the current can't flow around the full loop. So I'm going to ask you to record that information. Here we have a drawn series circuit on a bit of paper. If we add the components onto this, you can see these are the components that you'd use inside a lab. You've got two bulbs there, you've got a cell, and then you've got a switch. Now, to, if we add wires in, uh, it, it adds a bit more complication, but essentially the wires just complete the loop. So there we have a full diagram image of a series circuit of two bulbs, a switch, uh, and a cell. So the second circuit is a parallel circuit. As you can see, the two bulbs are set in parallel to each other. The components are connected side by side. In this circuit, the current can travel down more than one path, and you can see where the current could split uh, and go down either path through either bulb. In this particular circuit, unlike the series circuit, if one bulb blows, the current is still able to flow through the other bulb. So the other bulb stays lit. I'd like you to record that information, please. So here we have a parallel circuit drawn, and then if we add the components on, these are the components that you use in your classroom. You've got two bulbs there, you've got a switch and you've got a cell. And then if we add the wires onto this, it makes it look a little bit more complicated than it actually is. But there you have a parallel circuit. So just to stress, in a parallel circuit, the current can split and go down two different pathways. This means that if one bulb blows, the other one still remains lit. What I'd like you to do now then is uh, for this task is to compare the series circuit with a parallel circuit and you can use some of the notes that you've made from the previous slide. I'm going to give you five minutes in order to complete this.
Excellent, and stop there and let's see how we've got on. So, in science, in order to make a comparison, you need to talk about the similarities and the differences. For these two circuits, the similarities are the fact that both types of circuit use the same components. And all those components are connected, which allows the current to flow through all parts of the circuit. The differences are essentially where the current goes. So in a series circuit, the current flows through all the components, whereas in the parallel circuit, the current is split between the two branches. For this next task, you've got three minutes and you've got three questions. What I'd want you to do is to complete each one within a minute and they're all using the components that we've used so far. So the first one is to draw a series circuit with one bulb and one cell. The second one is to draw a series circuit with three bulbs, one open switch and the battery. And then the third one is to draw a parallel circuit with two bulbs, a resistor and one cell. And you've got three minutes in order to complete that task. Okay, time's up then, let's see how we've got on. So here's a very basic series circuit with one bulb and one cell, very similar to the one that we had at the start. Task two was to draw a series circuit with three bulbs, one open switch and a battery. And as you can see, we've got three bulbs following after each other, which implies that they're in a series circuit one battery and one open switch. And finally, task three was to draw a parallel circuit with two bulbs and a resistor and one cell. 
Now, it doesn't necessarily matter where the resistor is, but just as long as it's parallel to the other two bulbs. Uh, so, for instance, you have a bulb in the centre uh, and the resistor above it. It doesn't really matter, but there we have a cell, two bulbs and a resistor. OK, with the mindset that we need to have practice in order to make some progress, let's have a look at some past exam questions uh, on series circuits. So this first exam question is worth two marks. All you have to do is connect the circuit symbol with the name of the component and you've got 60 seconds in order to complete that task. Okay, fairly straightforward one. The first one is the bulb, um, which is connected with the lamp, and the second one is a fuse. Okay, for exam question number two, here we've got four different arrangements of resistors. As you can see, we've got P, Q, R, and S. Two of the arrangements are in series, and two are in parallel. And what you have to do is describe the difference between a series and a parallel arrangement. Now, you can discuss the difference in terms of potential difference, current or resistance, or you can talk about how they're actually set up um, within their circuit. You've got 120 seconds to complete this. As you can see, the question is worth two marks. Therefore, the examiner is going to want you to see two relevant comments made. So we'll start the timer now for two minutes. OK, and stop there. Let's just see what we've got. For a basic answer, we've got two points. A series circuit has only one path or loop or branch. And a parallel circuit has branches in order to provide more than one path for the current um, to go around the circuit. So here we've got exam question number three. Figure one shows a parallel circuit and you've got two resistors in parallel there. What you have to do is you have to calculate the current measured by ammeter A2 and you've got 60 seconds in order to complete that.
Okay, time's up with that one. So for, for this particular circuit, you've got a current of 0.56 amps going around. We know that the current splits and 0.43 amps goes through the ammeter A1. Therefore, we need to calculate what current goes through A2. So a little bit of maths, we need the, the current A2 plus 0.43 would equal the total current going around the system, which is 0.56. So all we do is we minus 0.43 from 0.56, and that gives us 0.13 amps. So exam question number four. Here in figure two, we've got a series circuit and you've got two resistors in series. So they're following after each other. And you've also got an ammeter which measures current in this circuit diagram. The question says, resistor R2 breaks. What happens to the reading on the ammeter? The question is only worth one mark and therefore you've got 60 seconds to complete it. Okay, and stop there then. So, as we can see, R2 breaks, therefore the reading on A, on the ammeter, will eventually decrease to zero. Uh, but the examiner is saying allow, the, it reads zero on the mark scheme. That's because you've got two resistors, similar to the bulbs that we saw earlier. If one bulb breaks, then the other one also breaks. If a resistor breaks, then therefore the current cannot flow around the loop of the circuit. So here we have exam question number five. In figure three, we've got a parallel circuit. As you can see, we've got resistor R3 and resistor R4. Also within the circuit, you've got two ammeters, A1 and the second ammeter, A2. So the question states, if resistor R3 breaks, what will happen to the reading on the ammeter on A1 and ammeter a2. Okay, so the question has got is out of two marks, therefore you've got two minutes in order to complete it. Okay, so let's see what we've got. So in ammeter A1, what you should find is that the current will eventually decrease to zero. And that's simply because in breaking R3, therefore you can't complete 
that loop. But for ammeter A2, you've still got some current going through the circuit, therefore the current reading will decrease, but it will not decrease to zero because you're still allowing some current to go through resistor R4. It will just be a smaller current than it would be if R3 and R4 were both working. Okay, this final task is a design task. Um, what I'd like to do is to design a circuit for an apartment that has four rooms that are lit by five bulbs. In one room, which is the kitchen, they have two bulbs. The rest all have one bulb in each. What you have to do is design a simple circuit that could be used to turn on and turn off the lights in each room individually. So in order to do this one, I'm not going to time it. What I want you to do is pause the YouTube recording and complete the task. OK, so here's one solution that you could have drawn for your design task. We've got three rooms with one bulb in and three different switches. And then at the end there, we've got the kitchen with two bulbs and the two bulbs are on a parallel circuit with one switch. OK, all that remains to say is thank you very much for listening and I look forward to seeing you in lesson two.